Bonjour les amis, alors on est sur YouTube, on est sur Facebook, on est sur Instagram, la totale, la folie aujourd'hui. On va envoyer un lien parce qu'effectivement il faut qu'on qu soit en live pour pouvoir envoyer le lien. Et ensuite, je vais inviter Scott dans pas longtemps. Donc déjà, merci de me confirmer que vous m'entendez bien, que le son est bon, que tout est ok. Mettez-moi un max de love les amis, un max de love, un max de like. Je veux le feu ce soir je veux que vous me montriez votre pêche Oui Non Yes Donc, on va démarrer dans pas longtemps. Donc, ce que je vais faire, c'est dans un premier temps, je vais d'abord présenter Scott rapidement. Ensuite, je vais l'inviter. J'espère qu'on n'aura pas de soucis. Si jamais on a un souci, on ira sur Click Meeting. Encore une fois, les aléas du direct, c'est en direct. Donc, il euh, y a tout qui est possible. Mais normalement, ça devrait être bon. Scott, are you here? So, basically, Scott, I will do a small presentation. And then, I will introduce you. And we will start this great interview. It will be great. Est-ce que tout le monde a la paix? Je veux un max de love, un max de likes. Pour ceux qui sont sur YouTube, pour ceux qui sont sur Instagram, venez sur Facebook parce que c'est là où aura lieu l'interview de Scott. Ok les amis, on va envoyer un lien maintenant et donc normalement c'est bon, le lien a été envoyé. Donc vous allez dans votre boîte email pour ceux qui sont sur YouTube, pour ceux qui sont sur Instagram pour pouvoir accéder à tout ça. Et déjà, je vais vous parler de Scott. Scott, il a réalisé l'année dernière des chiffres de fou et c'est quelqu'un que j'ai rencontré aux états unis c'est quelqu'un qui est d'une simplicité incroyable. Pourquoi je dis ça Parce qu'effectivement, je connais des gens qui sont dans le domaine du business, etc., qui ne gagnent pas autant que lui, qui n'ont pas les mêmes résultats et qui se la pètent. Et lui, en fait, ce qui est incroyable avec ce gars et ce que j'ai beaucoup apprécié, c'est son humilité. C'est également le fait qu'il est terre à terre, c'est-à-dire c'est un mec qui a une famille, qui est content d'avoir sa famille, qui n'est pas dans le show-off, qui n'est pas dans le bling-bling, d'accord Et ça, j'ai beaucoup, beaucoup, beaucoup aimé. Et en même temps, c'est quelqu'un qui est un compétiteur. Il a un état d'esprit de champion. Il a un état d'esprit de compétiteur. Et ça, les amis, c'est génial. Et aujourd'hui, je vais vous parler de mindset. D'accord Je vais vous parler de mindset. Pourquoi Parce que beaucoup de personnes parmi vous se focalisent sur la technique. Je vais faire de l'immobilier, je vais faire de la bourse, je vais faire du trading. Mais en fait, ce que vous oubliez, et pourquoi j'ai trouvé le parcours de Scott fascinant, ce que vous oubliez, c'est que ce qui fait la différence entre un champion et quelqu'un qui est moyen, ce n'est pas forcément les techniques. Parce qu'on le voit bien, Messi, j'ai vu ré récemment un reportage sur Messi. Ses coachs, ses entraîneurs le trouvaient faible, le trouvaient pas assez costaud, tout petit, chétif. Et Messi est devenu l'un des meilleurs joueurs au monde, si ce n'est le meilleur joueur au monde. Pourquoi Parce que le gars, il avait un mindset de fou. Le, un mindset de fou. Et l'histoire de Scott... C'est une histoire qui est incroyable parce que ce gars-là, il a un mindset de malade. Ce gars-là, il est arrivé aux États-Unis à l'âge de 15 ans, 15, 16 ans, d'accord Et quand il est arrivé aux États-Unis, Hi Scott, can you What listen to on, me? Can friend. you hear me? I can, I can. Great. How are you? I am doing incredible, my friend. Great man. That's great. So basically, I presented you very quickly. So what we will do is we will start now. Well, okay. The interview so that people will be able to ask you questions. Okay. And then, of course, we will talk about mindset. We will talk about the importance of being focused, the importance of, you know, the skill sets, the routines. We'll talk about all of that. Is that okay for you? I love it. Great. I love it. Great. Super. Donc, so, Scott, I will start in French, okay, for the questions, and then I translate them, and then you answer. Is that fine? And at the end, great. And then at the end, I will do a, a small... Uh, okay, just the sound is a bit quick. Okay, super. Est-ce que vous m'entendez bien, les amis? Est-ce que vous m'entendez bien sur Facebook? Mettez-moi un max de love. Mettez-moi un max de love. Vous êtes mou, là. Mettez-moi un max de love. Allez, du rythme. Vous êtes mou. Bon, première question. Je vais parler de Scott de ses débuts. Alors, pour information, Scott, il est arrivé aux États-Unis, il avait 15 ans, d'accord Et puis, il s'est retrouvé dans une situation terrible. Il a été adopté. Il est arrivé avec sa maman, ça ne s'est pas bien passé, et à 16 ans, il a été adopté. Et donc, pour lui, c'était terrible parce que quand on a 16 ans, on vient d'un pays lointain, l'Écosse, 
euh, il était dans un petit village, d'accord Et il arrive du jour au lendemain dans un, dans un autre pays qui est énorme, qui est immense, les États-Unis. C'est une autre culture, c'est une autre manière de voir les choses. Donc au départ, il a vécu les choses de manière tragique. Et donc la question que j'ai envie de poser à Scott, c'est comment il a réussi à surmonter finalement ses débuts aux États-Unis Quel a été son mindset Comment il a, il a réussi finalement à, à tourner la page rapidement Parce que ça a été un échec. So the first question is, you arrived very uh, young in the US, okay? You came from Scotland, a small village in Scotland, and so you arrived with your mom, and you said that, you know, it was tough because very quickly after that you were adopted, and then for you, a young kid from a small city of Scotland coming to the US, it's huge, it's great, it's different, And then you have to adapt very quickly. You're in a new family, new environment. How did you manage to overcome that? Yeah. And so um, two things really, uh, not to get like spiritual, but one glory of God helped with that as well. And, okay. and then a great family setting that, that um, sacrificed to take me in like they did and, and just showed me like what love is. Um, but then I think also, um, I think just how I was raised in Scotland and the friends that I had in Scotland and where I'm from in Scotland really taught me like there's two paths that you can go down. You can either be a victim or you can be a survivor. And so I tapped into that pretty early of we've got to go survive. And, um, you know, just through time and, and leadership of my, uh, of my dad and, and other mentors, they just, uh, I was very blessed to be put on the right path very quickly. And like I said, there's really two options that you have when you go through a tough childhood or, or just a tough period in life at all. You can either be the victim or you can be the survivor. And uh, I chose okay, to be the survivor. That's great, but it's tough for a kid, 16 years old, yeah. and you know, to have that mentality because many people, they become like uh, uh, delinquent, they do drugs, they do many stupid things because you know, they hate their parents, their yeah. family, their situation, especially it's a young age. How could you manage that? Because Grace of yeah. God, your family, but you had this mindset or it, it was something in you? No, absolutely. So there was definitely a drive in me. One of those drive and factors is um, there's two different things that happen that make an action happen in a person. There's pain and there's, um, uh, there's reward. Now, if you, can like, if you can tap into that pain and use that to take action, and I, I've been very blessed that even from a young age, I was doing that. Even uh, at the age yeah. of like nine, 10, 11, 12, when I was starting to play uh, football, soccer, um, I would tap into some of the pain that was happening into my life and saying, okay, I'm going to take this pain and I know what I want. I, and it wasn't even so much a case of knowing what I want. It was that I know what I don't want. And so that was constantly just driving me. Every time that I would get tired, I would think about that pain and I would use that as an action to drive forward. And in doing so, I've now been into the reward game. Um, but it was, I'm telling you, right. it was a young age. There was a drive in there that I knew what I didn't want to have, and I was willing to go do whatever it took to break through that. Mm. That's great. I will translate very quickly. Donc, Scott, effectivement, quand il arrive aux États-Unis, il a eu la chance d'être adopté par une bonne famille. Mais surtout, à un certain moment, il s'est dit soit je suis une victime, soit je suis un survivant. C'est-à-dire que tu peux soit accepter ton sort, toi, soit te dire j'ai pas le choix, c'est comme ça, la vie, elle me dit ça, et je dois l'accepter et devenir un délinquant, faire de la consommer de la drogue et rejeter la responsabilité sur ma famille, sur l'environnement, comme le font beaucoup trop de personnes. C'est-à-dire que beaucoup trop de personnes ont tendance à dire « c'est la faute à l'État, c'est la faute à ma famille, c'est la faute à ceci, c'est la faute à cela ». Non, à un certain moment, il faut assumer. Et Scott, il a dit c'était également une chance. Parce qu'effectivement, vous avez la peine, la, la, la douleur. Et cette douleur, c'est également une motivation. Ça permet de tirer en soi les ressources, de trouver effectivement l'énergie nécessaire pour aller de l'avant, d'accord Et c'est ce qui lui a permis justement de se hisser au meilleur niveau. So, that's great, first part. Second question. At what moment did you understand that you wanted to be in the business industry You did not want to be, you know, um, an employee. Because that's very difficult, because me, I did not know when I was young. I wanted to create my business. I wanted to be independent. I saw my father working hard for nothing, etc. And I knew that it was not the right path. I wanted to become, uh, you know, create my business and stuff like that. But my father told me, Tommy, you have to study. You have to have degrees. You have to do this. You have to do that. And this is what I did. And I became an employee. I worked for banks and stuff like that. 
that I became an employee because I followed my parents. And what was your situation, basically? Yeah. basically. So there was two things. In my mind, I'd always been very independent because of the circumstances of, of how I was raised, right? And the circumstances that had put me into. And so not to say that I was free-spirited, but even having uh, influences that would tell me, hey, look, um, you've got to work at a job for 32 years, 30 years, get a retirement mm -hmm. and do that. Like, that sounded good in my head, but my body could just okay. couldn't do that because um, okay. I'm too free-spirited, right? And so for me, yeah. it was like, it actually, uh, and not to get like too deep into this, but my daughter, what, there, was, there came a time where I had to make a choice of either working or being able to be with my daughter. And um, my middle daughter was born with a, a heart complication. And um, she okay. was a twin. And unfortunately, we lost her sister. And uh, when she was born, she had to be in the hospital for the first like two years of her life. Really the first year, oh she was in there like okay. six months out of that first year. And so I really didn't have a choice. It was like, I've got to figure out how to take these skills that I've learned from online marketing. And I've got to figure out how to generate revenue so that I can spend time at the hospital and take care of this little girl. Can I translate it very quickly? That's great. Thank you. Thank you. So, donc Scott, ce qu'il m'a dit, c'est que, alors je lui ai posé la question, je lui ai dit, est-ce que tu voulais être salarié ou est-ce que tu voulais créer ton business Il a dit, bon, bah, classique, tout le monde, effectivement, est tout conditionné pour devenir un salarié. Mais euh, je ne me voyais pas avoir ma retraite à 60 ans. Je ne me voyais pas travailler jusqu'à, finalement, 60 ans, 70 ans pour une hypothétique retraite. J'avais cette indépendance en moi. Je voulais, effectivement, comment dirais-je, prendre cette indépendance. Mais à un certain moment, il a, sa, sa deuxième fille était malade. C'est-à-dire qu'à sa naissance, elle avait une maladie du cœur. Et donc, elle était obligée, donc elle a été à l'hôpital. Et donc, durant deux années, elle était à l'hôpital et il s'est dit, OK, soit je continue de travailler, mais je ne serai pas à côté de ma fille. Soit je trouve cette indépendance, d'accord Je trouve les ressources, mes connaissances en marketing, etc. Et je vais les utiliser pour créer mon business et pour être à côté de ma fille. Great, great, great insight. Magnifique. Mettez-moi des loves, les amis, parce que c'est magnifique. Et encore une fois, on vient sur des choses personnelles. Et thanks, Scott, to talk about... To talk about These personal issues because you, you 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 can you know not talk about them but thanks for your honesty and to talk about that that's great thanks a lot so this is what led you to to do your business because it was your daughter it was a personal reason and it gave you the drive to create your business and to develop your business that's right okay yeah. great third question I, I start in French and then I, I translate it donc, dans une vidéo et dans un podcast, Scott, il a parlé de la « underdog mentality ». C'est-à-dire qu'il a dit « moi, je, je veux être toujours le challenger, je ne veux pas être le champion, je veux toujours avoir faim ». Et il a dit « en fait, quand tu as faim, tu, tu es toujours là à te battre. Quand tu as cette mentalité de challenger, tu es toujours là à t'entraîner plus dur, à essayer de te surpasser. Par contre, si tu as la mentalité de, de te dire « je suis champion », à un certain moment, tu n'as plus faim, tu n'as plus, plus cette envie de te dépasser. Et Scott, il a dit, voilà, j'aime cette mentalité du underdog. C'est comme Rocky. Rocky, euh, le gars, effectivement, tout le monde disait, c'est un loser, etc. Et puis, bien évidemment, il arrive à, à tenir do, durant le combat. Et il a dit la chose suivante, il a dit, je ne voulais pas être une victime. Tu peux soit être une victime, soit utiliser cette situation merdique pour te motiver comme un déclic. Et ce que j'ai beaucoup aimé dans sa présentation, c'est le déclic de sa fille qui nous permet de comprendre comment il s'est lancé dans le business. Et ça, c'est magnifique. So, my question is, I really loved you, the post, in, in a podcast, you talked about the underdog mentality. And you, t you said that you need to be hungry. You need to be always motivated in order, in order to succeed. Because if you don't, you know, have this underdog mentality, the problem is you make money and then you become, you know, uh, you, know you don't do anything. Crazy. Lazy, lazy. So, yeah, I would like you to talk to us about that, this underdog mentality. Absolutely. For me, you know, yet again, we talk on there's two actions that drive the human body to, to do something. That's typically because of pain yeah. or because yeah. um, a reward that yeah. they want to go after. Yeah. For me, um, you know, I just know that I'm very self-aware of who I am and, and what my skill sets are. And I know that one of the biggest skill set that's led me to where I am today is that drive yes. that we just talked about. Yes. And I know the, the meaning behind that drive is really that I don't want to go back to where I was as a kid. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah. I know exactly what the grass is like on the other side of the fence, and I, I'm not going to do Great. that. And so being like Great. self-aware of that, I try and tap into that as much as I can. And so even today, I mean, I live in a, I live in a nice house. I'm not going to say that we don't live in a nice house or anything like that. I live in a gated community. Um, I have a pool. I live on a lake. It's beautiful. Yeah. Um, but I don't live yeah. in a mansion, you know, for, for that reason. And, and um, I don't drive yeah. a Lamborghini or anything that, like yeah, that because yeah. that's not for and me. And we will yeah. talk about that. Just, just quickly, I translate and then we continue. Uh, uh, Scott a dit, voilà, moi j'ai toujours cette mentalité de challenger, d'accord Je veux toujours avoir faim parce que je sais d'où je viens. Je connais ma situation, je connais mon passé, je connais la douleur. Et donc je ne veux pas revivre ça. Et c'est pour ça qu'effectivement j'ai toujours faim pour réussir encore mieux, pour réaliser des choses énormes. Et je pense que beaucoup de personnes, effectivement, lorsqu'elles deviennent riches, elles oublient tout ça, elles, dou elles oublient d'où elles viennent, et elles commencent à devenir paresseuses, et elles n'ont plus effectivement cette combativité. C'est pour ça qu'on a beaucoup de joueurs de foot, de basket, qui se ruinent. C'est-à-dire que les gars, ils ont gagné des millions, et dès qu'ils ils prennent leur retraite, ils perdent tout. I talked about the NFL or the NBA players. Two years after the retirement, they lose all their money. These guys, they made millions, But just after that, they lose everything. First, because of course, financial education. But the second thing is the drive. They are not motivated. They spend lots of money. Another thing, I just translated because it was great. Il a dit Scott, il a dit moi je vis bien, j'ai une belle vie, euh, j'ai une belle maison, mais j'habite pas dans un palace. Il a dit j'ai une piscine, euh, on n'habite pas loin d'un lac, on a une belle vie. Mais il a dit mais je reste effectivement, je vis en dessous de ce que je pourrais faire. J'ai pas de Lamborghini, j'ai pas de Ferrari. Parce qu'encore une fois, voilà, il a cette « underdog mentality ». Et ça, j'adore parce que c'est de l'éducation financière, les amis. Les gars qui, font, qui jouent à la NBA, deux ans après, ils se ruinent. Pourquoi Parce que les gars, ils vivent au-dessus de leurs moyens. Ils ont des millions, mais ils ont mal su le gérer. Et Scott, justement, c'est un, un magnifique exemple. Parce qu'on voit beaucoup d'infopreneurs, les gars, ils flambent, Ferrari, Lamborghini et compagnie. Alors qu'ils gagnent beaucoup moins que Scott. Et Scott, on voit bien que c'est un gars qui est terre à terre. Il a des enfants, c'est un, un père de famille et son, 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 son objectif premier, c'est d'abord de sécuriser sa famille. Et il sait bien que l'idée, ce n'est pas de vivre au-dessus, même s'il a les moyens. Moi aussi, j'ai beaucoup, j'ai les moyens, mais je ne le fais pas parce que je sais que derrière, voilà, je suis un peu comme Scott. Je pense qu'on a la même mentalité. On sait d'où on vient, on sait la galère, on sait les souffrances. On n'a pas envie de revivre ça. I said that me too, I, I, you know, I had very, very tough background. So it was hard for me. And like you, I don't want to come back. Because many people, they say, yeah, but Rich, you're not happy, you're not, yeah, okay. But when I was poor, <laughs> when I was living in a <laughs> shitty situation, I know that. I don't want to come back to that. So I totally agree with you. Would you, would you like to add something to, to that? Because it's great. Because it's great. Yeah, just that, like, so I try and, you know, there's a, there's a certain lifestyle that I want my kids to be surrounded with. There's also a certain lifestyle yeah. that I don't want them to be surrounded with because I want them to have that same drive that I have because that's the biggest mm -hmm. thing that I can teach them. Right. right. Um, and right. so because of that, like I really set myself up, like I live, um, I live within my means and, and a lot of it, like there's a higher meaning to why you're here and that's really what you should yeah. be tapping into. Um, and that's not yeah. about like how much you have in Money. the bank at all. Right. I totally agree with you, I'm 100% with you. Donc Scott, il a dit, ok, moi j'ai les moyens de gâter mes enfants, j'ai les moyens effectivement de leur offrir ce qu'ils veulent. Mais il a dit, je fais en sorte qu'ils ne soient pas gâtés, qu'ils ne soient pas pourri gâtés, pour qu'ils sait qu'ils aient faim. Il veut que ses enfants, ils aient faim. Parce que si effectivement on leur donne tout, le problème c'est quoi C'est qu'à un certain moment, ils ne vont rien foutre. Hein, on, on le sait bien, les gosses de riches, généralement, Donald Trump, <laughs> no, Donald Trump, <laughs> Donald Trump, he's, uh, you know, he was rich, his parents were rich, and we see that, I'm just joking. But, mais on voit bien effectivement que les gosses de riches, euh, parfois effectivement, ils tournent assez mal. Et là, l'idée, c'est que justement, il faut avoir cette, cette même, comment dirais-je, éducation à l'égard de ses enfants. Et le dernier point qu'il a dit, c'est, euh, j'ai oublié, mais en tout cas, voilà, il faut avoir toujours, toujours, voilà, il disait, je vis euh, selon les moyens, pas au-dessus, d'accord Justement pour toujours, toujours, toujours garder cette envie de me dépasser. Fantastique Depuis quand tu as vraiment explosé sur les plans des résultats financiers Et qu'est-ce qui t'a permis de réaliser des résultats de fou So, the, in English, since when have you like exploded financially And what enabled you to, to become like rich or to make, to have great results 
Yeah, and, and just uh, Scott, can I can I just translate another thing because it what you you talked before about the mission, and I just want to translate that because it's great. J'ai oublié de traduire un truc de, de Scott, un point de Scott qui est intéressant. Il a dit en fait l'objectif c'est pas l'argent. C'est pas la finalité pour moi, même s'il si génère des, des revenus de fou. Mais il a dit la, la finalité pour moi c'est pas l'argent. Il a dit on a tous une mission sur Terre et mon but effectivement c'est voilà c'est un objectif. Et encore une fois chacun sa mission sur Terre. On est bien d'accord les amis. Mais c'est quelque chose que je répète souvent. Il y en a qui me disent ouais mais Tami pourquoi il dit ça Mais là on le voit avec Scott, c'est-à-dire que finalement l'argent c'est un moyen, c'est une énergie. C'est pas une finalité. C'est pourquoi on le gagne. C'est quoi Qu'est-ce qui nous fait Qu'est-ce qui nous motive à gagner Moi, le numéro un, c'est l'indépendance, la liberté, et bien évidemment, le fait de se réaliser, de faire des choses de fou. C'est ça le but. Great. So, since when have you exploded financially? So, uh, concerning the results. Absolutely. Yes. So, from being able to like generate revenue, there's like just like there's been a shift over this last two years for me. I've always been able to like make money online, um, and that process or leverage my skill set to be able to make money. Um, but this yeah. last two years, it's just like there's a difference now in that I don't just leverage my skill set. I'm able to leverage my resources, my ability, my team. And in doing so, now it's um, uh, I'm able to take a profit share and invest in a lot of other businesses and other clients. So it's not just like it's not just me that's generating money now. It's like a, a combination of all the work ethic that we put in now then like 10 X's um, that revenue because we take a piece in all of it. And so really this last two years, it's not so much about explosive as much as it is that I've learned how to leverage. And in doing so, um, it's just been, it's been bonkers. That's yeah. great. What are That's the great. leverages you used to, to, to increase your results? So I, you, you talked a lot about your team. We will talk about it later. Your team, skills. You talked about uh, mentors, you have mentors. You go to mastermind. So basically, you try to learn from other sources and stuff like that. So tell me about that. 100%. So I think the, the, the biggest thing is I've been able to tap in to take what my current skill set has been over these years of, of like finding that sweet spot. And then being able to uh, just really put all the pieces to the puzzle together. And so I'm able to leverage that. Like a lot of people in business, right? You're, you're really good at wearing one hat. Whereas when you're able mm. to connect all the different hats together, um, yes. you become a little bit more powerful. And, and I don't know if that's the best yeah. choice of words, but you're a, way more resourceful. And so um, what I've really figured out how to do is how to work those relationships. And I've been able to surround myself, not just from like a, a team point of view, but even just what we call strategic partners. Um, I'm very mm. in tune with my craft. And so mm. I wouldn't say like I know all the players in this game of this marketing game, but in some form or fashion, I have a relationship with them and I'm able to tap into that. But what I've really learned is how to figure out like everybody's hack. Everybody has a hack mm. and a process that they've learned to be able to get that skill set and being able to get that leverage and that traction. And what I've tried to do over this last couple of years and really over this last like six to nine months is try and study what their hack was and what they did. And then I just layer it and layer it. And so, you know, my playbook has just gotten bigger and bigger and bigger. And so when I'm in a situation in business, um, whether you're like trading or in your business or whatever, I'm able to tap into this big playbook that I have now. I'm like, okay, let me use this play because I know that that's the play that's going to work. Right that's, now. Great. That's, that's great. I will translate. I'll try. Mais il a dit en fait qu'il avait plein de ressources. Donc, le, le, comment, comment il a réussi à exploser sur un plan financier Premièrement, effectivement, il s'est entouré des meilleurs, c'est-à-dire qu'il a une super équipe et il a dit voilà, il, il m'apporte un effet de levier. C'est-à-dire que le plus important, c'est pas de se dire on a tous en nous une force, on a des compétences, on peut effectivement être bon dans un domaine, on peut pas être bon partout. Donc il faut aller voir les autres, il faut aller se former avec les autres, il faut avoir, avoir des mentors, il faut participer à des masterminds, c'est-à-dire aller avec les meilleurs et apprendre auprès des meilleurs. Et puis bien évidemment, il faut trouver des partenaires stratégiques, c'est-à-dire des gens qui peuvent nous compléter, qui peuvent nous apporter quelque chose. Et c'est comme ça que nos résultats vont monter en puissance, d'accord Et c'est vraiment quelqu'un, alors et Scott, vous le voyez, hein, c'est génial parce que bon, le gars, il a quand même des super résultats. Et vous voyez comment il parle, il est hyper humble, hyper direct, etc. Et j'adore ça. Et on voit bien que bah, c'est ça l'état d'esprit 
pour moi, des meilleurs. C'est-à-dire qu'effectivement, ils sont là, ils sont ouverts, ils ne sont pas là à dire... Uh, you, you know this uh, sentence from Harv Ecker? That I love this sentence. I don't know if you, you love Harv Ecker, the guy about millionaire mindset, but there is this, yeah, yeah. this sentence from him, you can be right or you can be rich, but you can be both. I love this sentence. Yeah, because it sums, sums it up. Because basically, many people want to be right and they are poor. But if you are like in your situation, basically you don't want to be right, you want to have results. So basically you're focused on how can I have results? How can I find the best people? Because if you believe you're right, you will never go to others, to see others, to talk to others, to find resources. But if you believe that you want to be rich or you want results, what you will do is simple. You will try to find the best, learn from the best and be always, always in the learning process. We met in Orlando at the Final Hacking event and it was great but I would never have known you if I have not been there if I said to myself okay why go to Orlando I already know that etc but it was really interesting and from that we had this relation and we have this line and we have probably some projects but it's great and it's important to 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 go to meet people like you and because we learn and we progress. Yeah, let me, uh, let me touch on that a little bit because, you know, one of the things yes. I, I really want to say is that, um, you know, there's the old adage saying of you, you miss 100% of the shots that you don't take, but you've got you've to put yourself in a position to even be successful, um, to even be able to take the shot. And don't be, like, shy to take the shot because that's the – you're literally one shot away from cracking that code of success. Um, you, d you don't know what it's going to be, but if you're not willing to take that shot, then uh, you're, it's just never going to happen. Like, no, this is not going to be given to you. No one's going to come to you and say, um, here you go. Um, you've got to go and take it. And the other thing, too, is you've really got to be self-aware. Like, if you're not comfortable going um, to, like, an event, then take some friends with you that can put you in a position so that you feel more comfortable, yeah. right? Um, yes. And I do that. Like, for instance, I am one of the most self-aware people that I know. Because, for instance, even in my big company right now, I am not a CEO. That's just not my skill set. Um, mm -hmm. I don't like getting into, like, the day-to-day. -day. Now, I'm really good at vision. I'm really good at strategy. And I'm also really good at relationships. And so, for me, like, I'm a really good COO, um, like a chief operating officer, um, because I can connect mm -hmm. everybody. And I also know the uh, what's that need to be done in every department. And so connecting that is really my skill set. Now, if the younger me, which was a little bit more egotistical because I was young, yes. Yes. it was yes. all about give me that title. I want to be my own boss. I'm the CEO. Um, yeah. I can get yeah. this done, I, I, I. But when you change to the word we and us, it's a whole different game. Okay? C'est super ce qu'a dit Scott. Donc effectivement, le, le, le truc, c'est qu'il a dit, voilà, quand on est jeune, on est un peu euh, voilà, un ego surdimensionné. On parle toujours à la première personne, moi, 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 moi. Mais il a dit effectivement, il faut passer de ce moi à nous, d'accord, l'équipe. Il faut parler en fait, euh, il faut toujours avoir de la gratitude envers les gens qui vous aident, qui vous apportent de la valeur, qui vous font bouger. Il faut, et il a dit une chose très intéressante, il a dit, on est un petit hack de la réussite. C'est-à-dire qu'en en fait, la réussite, ça tient à trois fois rien. Vous rencontrez les bonnes personnes, vous avez la bonne idée, vous euh, faites les bonnes rencontres. Et ça peut changer votre vie, ça peut littéralement changer de, de votre vie. Combien de personnes sur ma chaîne YouTube m'ont dit « Tami, en regardant tes vidéos, ça y est, j'ai eu le déclic. » Ils n'ont même pas suivi ma formation, mais ils, ils ont suivi que quelques vidéos, ils ont eu un déclic de fou. Et en fait, les gars, il faut vraiment avoir un état d'esprit ouvert, il faut vraiment être humble, ouvert d'esprit, avoir envie d'apprendre. « Be hungry to learn. » This is so, so, so important. You know, always learning. Me, like every year, every year, you know, I take many courses. I try to learn. I'm always, always watching what is done, you know, in, whether in business, in trading, whatever. But I try to, you know, make progress, learn, learn, learn. Because this is the, 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 the name of the game. If you want to be successful, you have to learn all your life. Oh, yeah. 100%. Agreed? Agreed? my friend. Great. Great. So... Fifth question, I will start in French. Donc, quel est ton rapport à l'argent euh, Il y a deux approches de l'argent. Donc, quand on parle de s'enrichir, généralement, c'est « je m'enrichis sur le dos des autres ». Et il y a la deuxième version qui dit « je m'enrichis, mais en apportant de la valeur aux autres ». Moi, je le dis, et je suis, voilà, moi, j'essaie, bien évidemment, peut-être que tout le monde ne sera pas d'accord avec moi, 
Mais moi, quand, quand je, je veux m'enrichir en apportant de la valeur, c'est en aidant les autres, en apportant de la valeur, en changeant la vie des autres, en ayant un impact sur les autres. C'est comme ça que je veux m'enrichir. D'accord Et c'est comme ça que je veux gagner ma vie. Parce que, comme je vous l'avais dit, je pourrais faire plein de business. Et ce serait super facile pour moi. Mais ça ne m'intéresse pas. D'accord Je veux vraiment apporter de la valeur. Et je vais poser la question à Scott, si ça ne vous dérange pas. Et ensuite, bien évidemment, on rebondira. So, fifth question is... What is your relationship to money? Basically, there are two approach. The first one is I make money on others. Basically, I make money, but others will lose. And the other one is I bring massive value to others, and this will enable me to make money. So what is your vision about money? What is for you money? And what do you think it, you know, uh, what, what is, when you're making money, what are you thinking, up, thinking about? Yeah, absolutely. So great question. Um, way to get into the nitty gritty. I love it. So for me, it's definitely yeah. the, uh, the second part of that is that I know that like my skill set is that I connect with entrepreneurs like yourself, for instance, and I know that you have a message and, um, and just a passion inside of you that you know that you can really make an impact in this world, whether that's mm. small or, or great. Like in your world, I know that you believe and I believe in you that you can truly make an impact in this world and so i know that i can help share that and i know that i can um with my skill set my resources that um, i'm able to leverage that i can i can exponentially like grow that um on a, on a way faster level and in doing so like i believe that you're going to empower other people and then they're going to empower other people and they're going to empower other people and what happens is it's just like uh, i'm trying to think of the word for this um It's like just the prosperity game because if you impact 10 people, you're going to make way more money than just making money for one person. Um, mm. And if you're doing it for the right cause, like I actually believe this, like I don't work with everybody. There's, um, I turn down way more clients than I, I take on because mm. if I don't think it's like, if, one, if I don't believe in your, your, your cause and I bet a lot of our, our clients out personally, um, I have to believe in what you're doing because that's, mm -hmm. that's ultimately what I think we get judged on is how do we impact this world. And in doing so, like, I don't, I don't really think of money as money at this point. I really think of it as like independent uh, jewels, if you want to call them, um, that just allow me to live the lifestyle that I, that I want to live. But I think if you, if you, like, I think if your heart is in the right place and your mind is in the right place and you're tapped into what your true skill set is and you're doing that skill set every single day and that's how you're honoring mm -hmm. this world, then uh, you're going to be you're going to be wealthier than anything that you can put inside of a bank account. Great, great. I will translate if you allow me. C'est magnifique. Donc Scott, il est bien évidemment, il m'a dit que c'était la deuxième version qui refusait pas mal de clients parce que justement ses valeurs n'étaient pas en accord, que le, la finalité c'était pas l'argent. Mais que si tu, grâce à tes actions, tu pouvais avoir un impact sur les gens, tu pouvais changer leur vie, tu pouvais impacter 10 personnes, 20 personnes, 100 personnes, 1000 personnes, ce qui arrive, c'est qu'à un certain moment, effectivement, tu t'enrichis beaucoup plus que la personne qui finalement ne pense qu'à sa tronche. Parce que finalement, pourquoi on le fait D'accord C'est quoi l'impact Moi, encore une fois, ma chaîne YouTube, c'est gratuit. Et je reçois des messages de malades, des personnes qui me disent, voilà, alors bien évidemment, de temps en temps, on a quelques petits haters, c'est normal. Mais je reçois des messages magnifiques tous les jours. Et ça me permet de me dire, voilà, c'est ça mon why. C'est pour ça que je me réveille. Je change la vie des gens. J'ai un impact sur leur vie. Je les motive. Je leur permets de sortir de leur, de leur zone de confort. Je leur, permets de, je leur permets de se motiver. Et donc, c'est pour moi, effectivement, la chose la plus puissante, la plus importante. Sixth question. Euh, quels sont, alors in French, quels sont tes conseils pour quelqu'un qui souhaite débuter dans l'entrepreneuriat What are your recommendations for somebody that wants to start a business What is the first advice Yeah, so uh, the first advice is this. If you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together. And so surround okay. yourself with an incredible team um, mm -hmm. based on the knowledge of what that business is that you actually want to do. Okay, but it's very difficult to find a team, especially when you start, and you have sometimes problems with teams. But I agree with you, I 100%, but it's just, I try to, yes. First of all, like, it, it comes down to self-awareness. Don't start a business that you're not already somewhat of a knowledge champion in. 
I went into online marketing. Um, I opened my first agency because I'd worked for some of the largest media companies in the world. And I'd worked with mm. like some of the biggest companies or, or um, automotive companies in the US mm. um, with huge mm. budgets. And so I'd managed to hone mm. my skills I also study, like, I'm very passionate about this. I studied my ass off for a long time, and I still do today. Like, I stay up on the trends. And so because of that, um, when the moment came for me to go catapult, I already had absorbed wow. everything that I needed right. to at least get some traction right out the get-go. So if you haven't done that, then you shouldn't even be open in a business right now. Great. I, I'm on the same side. And this is because many, many, many young people, they ask me on my YouTube channel, tell me, you know, I'm 18 years old. I want to create my business and stuff like that. And I always say, okay, first, you know, have knowledge, have an expertise, go to school, go to college, because you can make it, you can make it today at the, the internet age, it's possible to make it at 18, 20, but so many fail, so many fail, and at the end they have no degree and no business, and they are in a shitty situation, so that's great, I will just translate it. Donc ce qu'il dit, il dit d'abord si vous voulez créer un business, il faut d'abord avoir une expertise, il faut d'abord avoir vraiment des connaissances solides. Il dit voilà, lui il a travaillé pour les plus grands groupes dans le domaine de l'automobile, dans le domaine du marketing, etc. Il a travaillé avec des gros, gros, gros mastodontes et, 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 et ça lui a permis d'apprendre énormément de choses. Il a dit quand j'ai créé mon business, j'avais déjà une expertise de fou. Donc ça veut dire que quand j'ai lancé mon business, j'étais déjà costaud. Je ne suis pas arrivé comme ça du jour au lendemain avant de lancer mon business. Et ça, c'est génial. Et l'autre chose, c'est qu'il dit, voilà, il faut avoir une équipe. Il faut, il faut bien s'entourer. Je lui ai dit que ce n'était pas évident de trouver, effectivement. Il a dit, voilà, mais il faut le faire. Et je suis totalement d'accord avec lui. C'est-à-dire que pour vraiment monter en puissance, il faut avoir une équipe de fou. Et ça, c'est quelque chose de super important. So, great for the sixth question. Seventh question, what are your day-to-day -day routines yeah, ah. so, yeah, no, this is great. So I've made a shift over this last three months because my wife is an attorney. She's a lawyer and um, she really, she has career goals. She wants to be, a, I'll be straight up, she wants to be a judge. And so in doing so, she knew that she had, there's a certain path that she feels like she has to do to be able to go do that. So she wanted to go back into the uh, workforce and, and work for a really nice firm here and one of the largest firms here in Florida um, so that she could study her craft. And so for me, like I have, I've busted my butt for this last 10 years. Um, I wanted to spend more time with the kids. And so I don't even go into the office that much anymore. Uh, this is my typical day. Um, my wife gets up super early. And so I get up, I get the kids ready. Um, I take care of the dogs. I've got a Great Dane and a Weinreimer that okay. are crazy. I then take the kids to yes. school. I, I walk them over uh, the bridge and that's a fun thing to do. And then I come home, I, um, I go for a, a run to get my mindset right. Um, I, okay. I listen to some, uh, I listen to Pep Talk, which is like my, my favorite app. It's a motivational app. Um, right. yeah. And then I'll spend the first like 15, 20 minutes kind of going through um, important emails and, and messages so that I can make a to-do list. Um, and then I'll jump into mm -hmm. like my project management tool. And then I just kind of work with my team to start off with. Uh, I do what's called like a scrum. And we'll just uh, jump on a quick call and make like action plans for the day or where we're at or if we have some big launches. And then uh, really what I do is like, I'll jump into projects from time to time. Um, I'm really at this point just making sure everything is working the way that it needs to. I'm still big into strategy. That's like, I love chess. And so I still jump into a lot of the strategy side of our business. Um, and so I spend a lot of time on that. And then I go pick up the kids and we go have a blast in the afternoon. And, right. and that's really it. Right. Wow. Yeah. wow. That's, it's a good life, man. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's crazy because this is not how people imagine it. And I love it, and I will just translate it. Donc, moi, ce que je disais, c'est que... And what I said to, to the audience before we started, is that what I liked with you is you're a humble guy. You're really down to earth, family man. You know, you're not, you're not like in a bling bling, in a show off and stuff like that. And yeah, and that's great. Donc, euh, Scott, il me dit, OK, le matin... Alors, sa femme, elle est, elle est, elle est avocate et elle veut devenir juge. Donc elle est focalisée sur, sur sa carrière. Et elle a dit, moi en fait j'emmène mes enfants le matin à la maison, euh, à, à l'école. Puis je fais mon petit footing, puis je commence à bosser. Et il a dit, le soir je reprends les enfants. Et il a dit, en fait j'ai une vie très tranquille, très normale. Et, et, et pourquoi je vous en parle Parce que le gars il réalise des chiffres de fou. Et il est tout à fait... Et, et vous, vous avez des gars, ils font rien <rire> par rapport à lui. Et les gars, c'est show off, c'est bling bling, etc. Et c'est magnifique. Et c'est pour ça que je voulais l'interviewer. Est-ce que vous aimez Do you like this video Do you love Do you love it Mettez-moi des love. Mettez-moi des love, les amis. 
Magnifique, magnifique, magnifique. It's great. So for the routines, it's okay. Eight questions. I will, I will uh, do it in French first. Euh, comment fais-tu pour rester motivé en permanence alors que je suppose aujourd'hui tu n'as plus besoin de travailler? How can you keep, you know, or stay motivated every day? We talked about it before, but I think it's interesting to 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 answer this question. How can you, you know, keep this motivation knowing you do not need, I suppose, to work? You know, like me, uh, you know, I can't stop working till the end of my life and I, I'm financially free. So now that's a great, great, great sensation. But what keeps you motivated? Because you can stop. Yeah. So uh, for me at this point, it's about greatness. And then I know I'm sure a lot of people, like that seems like a cop out. But for me, it's about legacy and also that next challenge. Um, I want to get better yeah. and better, and uh, I want to drive more and more, whether it's revenue or just success at what I do. And so I want to be able to put a body of work together over these next five to seven years, and then, uh, I'll, then I'll come up for a breath of, of fresh air. I'll be able to look at that body of work and, and see where I'm at, and then I'll look at the bank and see what the scoreboard says. But right now, like, I, I don't even look at the bank. To be honest with you, yeah, um, this is yeah, this is crazy. I, I will I will come to to it. It was the ninth question. I will I will say it in French and then we'll talk about it. Okay, okay. c'est super. Je, 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 la question 9, la, la question numéro 9 comporte une partie de sa réponse. Donc là, dans la question numéro numéro 9, en fait, ce que Scott a dit, il a dit en fait, je suis pas dans le business pour de l'argent. Je gagne de l'argent, je gagne beaucoup d'argent, mais en fait, ce que je fais, c'est que je regarde même pas ce que je gagne. Il a dit en fait, j'ai un budget mensuel. Euh, je dis à ma femme, voilà, euh, voilà ce qu'on peut dépenser par mois. Il a dit, on vit très confortablement, mais je ne regarde pas mes résultats. Il a dit, pourquoi Parce qu'en fait, je me dis, je, je suis concentré sur le process. C'est-à-dire, essayer d'être le meilleur dans mon domaine, garder et, et, et marquer de mon empreinte, c'est-à-dire legacy, c'est-à-dire pour après, c'est-à-dire avoir une mission et, et, et finalement marquer de son empreinte euh, bah, le monde. Et, euh, et il dit, voilà, moi je laisse ça. Et je ne m'occupe pas de mon argent. And in the ninth question, so I said, okay, basically you're not in the business for money. You don't even look at your bank account. You're making money, etc. But you say, okay, I don't care. I'm just, you know, it's just in the bank. But I'm focused on the process. But my question was, what is your financial goal? Do, do you have a financial goal like 100 million, 1 billion, 2 billion? Do you have a financial goal? Yeah, really, it's about um, I want to be in a place where um, my kids' kids will be taken care of. Um, I want like, like that true generation after generation wealth. Um, and then yeah. I also want to be in a position where um, uh, when, I'm, when I'm older and my wife's retired, I want to be able to take care of our whole family and then her family. And so, you know, my goal is, um, is to be able to buy this big piece of land and have multiple properties yeah. on it where all of our family is at and that they'll always be able to call that home. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think like, uh, I haven't really thought about the score. I, I call it the scoreboard of, of really what I yeah. want to achieve from a number point of view. Um, cause really like at the end of the day, it's, it's all irrelevant. Like in, in, uh, in all no, actual reality. I think you, when you have a few millions, it's okay. Basically, you're, yeah. you're, you're, you're in the one percent. You're in the top one percent in the world. So I think it's not. It's just yeah. Is it a challenge? Is it what do you want? What 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 are you you know? And it's what you said. It's for your family, your daughters, and you said the children of my children. That is great. So basically, this is what you're looking for. I'm what you aim for. What you aim for. Yeah, because truth is, when you get to a certain level, not like. We all deal with the same problems and struggles in life. It doesn't matter how much money you have. The only difference is, is now, instead of drinking Budweiser, um, like I did in college, I now drink Heineken. Um, yeah. You know, instead of, okay. instead of getting a $10, bottle, a $10 bottle of wine, I buy a $100 bottle of wine. Um, it's the okay. same, it's the same, you, you yeah, still have course. the same struggles, yeah, we have the same you just struggles. are, yeah. the same struggles. you're just able but to problem solve better. them but a little bit. Life, life is, better. Better. Life is a lot better, the, the truth is this, you can solve a lot of problems <laughs> yes. with money, like that's the, that's the, the period, yeah. like there's a lot of things that's I'm it. able to do because of that. It does not solve everything, but it solves many, many, many problems. I can, I can, yeah, hundred percent, thousand percent, I would even say. Donc je vais revenir, donc j'ai demandé à Scott, je lui ai dit ok, 
Ton objectif aujourd'hui, c'est quoi Puisque tu es libre financièrement, tu as déjà gagné ta vie. Est-ce que ton objectif, c'est de gagner 100 millions Est-ce que c'est de gagner 1 milliard Il dit en fait, mon objectif, c'est que mes enfants et que les enfants de mes enfants puissent subvenir à leurs besoins, qu'ils n'aient pas besoin de travailler. Donc en fait, mon, mon, mon objectif, c'est ma famille. C'est-à-dire qu'effectivement, on puisse, euh, que, qu'ils puissent effectivement subvenir à leurs besoins, qu'ils n'aient pas, effectivement, qu'ils ne soient pas dans le manque, qu'ils ne soient pas, effectivement... Et donc, c'est véritablement son objectif. Après, il n'a pas véritablement un, un, une target en termes financiers, parce que c'est quelque chose, effectivement, de très, de très flou, de très vague, mais c'est d'abord et avant tout un objectif familial. Great. Time to question. Donc, dixième question, tu as dit que tout le monde, quand tout le monde veut dormir, je veux travailler. Quand tout le monde veut la, faire la fête, je vais travailler. Et qu'il fallait avoir faim pour avancer. Est-ce que pour toi, la plus grande qualité pour réussir dans le business ou dans n'importe quel autre domaine, c'est d'avoir faim Tu as dit qu'il fallait toujours se considérer comme un challenger, toujours avoir faim, ne jamais abandonner. Et c'est ce qui explique ton succès. So basically, the question was about, yeah, the, hang, the, the challenger, the underdog. The, the, the fact that you need to be hungry. So for you, it's the key aspect of your success today? 100%. 100%. Okay. Okay, great. So question 11. I think we talked about it, but and you, you, you answered this, but I will ask you this question again because I think it's great. How, uh, I, I will do it first in French. Comment tu fais pour garder les pieds sur terre, sachant que quand on gagne beaucoup d'argent, on peut péter un câble on le voit avec les joueurs de foot, les joueurs de NFL, on le voit même, même les joueurs de l'équipe de France, Hugo Loris, le capitaine de l'équipe de France, le gars il est en voiture, il est ivre. Come on, quand euh, tu, tu, tu es joueur, tu es capitaine, tu donnes l'exemple, tu n'es pas ivre en voiture. Et donc, il y a beaucoup de joueurs de basket qui se ruinent deux ans après avoir arrêté le foot. Comment tu fais pour ne pas péter un cap So, what I just said is, you know, how can you stay focused Because money is dangerous, and you see it with the, you know, the players, the traders, uh, you, you have so many people when they, they make money, they lose you know, control. Money is controlling them, they become slaves, even if they make lots of money, and they, 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 they waste their money, etc. How can you keep like, focused on your objectives, even if you're making lots of money? Yeah. And so for me, that's my spirituality. That's what I invest a lot into um, time into that. Um, okay. Because yet again, that's the, the higher power at the end of the day, like, why are you here? And yeah. you got to figure out that for yourself. Like, I'm not here to preach or, or teach that. Like, yeah, I, I think that's, that's a journey. And so um, I've got a mentor that uh, I meet on a weekly basis that, that really taps me into that. And so that, that, um, that helps me like really stay focused on what my, um, what my purpose is here. And it lets me detach from the, the money aspect of it. Yeah. Uh, but then I also, um, I still have a lot of my old friends that I grew up with um, that, that uh, they just see me as, as Scott from Scotland, their friend that yeah. they grew up with. And, and so, um, I don't know, like they, uh, that keeps me like very well grounded. I, I speak to like my best friend, I speak to him every single day when I'm driving back from, from the school from dropping the kids off. And he doesn't see me as the internet guy or this like big shot business marketing guy. He just sees me as his best friend. And so um, I celebrate with him on some of the big wins and uh, some of them I just bounce ideas with and he just keeps me, he keeps me pretty humble and, and well to the ground. That's great. And, and for me, there, there is also an aspect of family. You talked, you, you, I think it's, I suppose it's very important the family, and also your, your values. Basically, it's something, you know, you grow with, but you have, you know, to work on them. Uh, for me, um, I, would like, I would like to say it's quite the same. And, and that, you know, money for me was never an end. Basically, it's just a tool. I always, you know, I wanted to become rich, of course, to be successful but never for me. First, it was for the others, for my family and stuff like that. So I was also in this kind of mindset. So uh, Scott, he said, voilà, moi, ce qui me permet de rester terre à terre, c'est le côté spirituel. J'ai également un mentor avec lequel je parle toutes les semaines qui me permet effectivement de rester focus et de ne pas, le, le, pas péter un câble à cause de, de l'argent qu'il gagne. Il a dit également, je suis toujours un mec normal, c'est-à-dire que mes anciens copains, même si je suis devenu quand même un ponte dans mon domaine, je suis devenu voilà, un gros dans mon domaine, euh, ben, je suis toujours effectivement resté terre à terre, j'ai toujours les mêmes potes d'enfance, etc. Et ça, c'est quelque chose de génial. Great, great. 
Question 12. You said you had, I will start in French. Donc tu as dit que tu avais des mentors, que tu participais à des masterminds, que tu voulais être le meilleur dans ton domaine comme un sportif de haut niveau. Tu as même fait la comparaison avec le golf, etc. Est-ce que pour toi, c'est important justement de continuer à t'enrichir et à participer à ces masterminds, à avoir des coachs Est-ce que cette mentalité, finalement, tu t'inspires du sport de haut niveau Et est-ce que pour toi, vraiment, pour toi, il y a énormément de similitudes entre le business et le sport de haut niveau So, this is the question. So, basically, you said that you had mentors, you participated to mastermind and stuff like that, that you wanted to become the best in your field. So, for you, it was like a craft. You, you talked a lot about craftsmanship, And you make lots of comparison with sports, with golf and stuff like that. And you said for me, it's like honing my skills, honing my skills, becoming better, becoming better. So for you, is it really like sports? Do you see business as a sport or not? Oh, 100%. It's like a sport. Um, yeah. yeah. I grew up for a long time thinking that I was going to be a, a professional soccer player. Um, okay. and, and so like I still, you know, I think especially as a guy, like we're super competitive. And so like I really relate to the competitiveness of sport. Yeah. And I think it's no different in the business world. Like it is super competitive, mm -hmm. um, especially in what I do in, in marketing and, and sales. Um, it's because like there's a score on everything that I do. Like everything that I do is like that's why egos aside is like data. The data okay. doesn't lie. Opt in rates, conversion rates and, and stuff like that. And so there's tactics that I need to learn, just like LeBron James or yeah. Tiger Woods has to learn at how to better their craft especially if the game changes, um, because this game, the business game is always changing. Yeah. Um, and so you've got to stay on top of that. And, and it's no different. Like LeBron James works at his craft eight hours a day, 10 yeah. hours a day. Yeah. If you're not doing the same thing in your business, then, But then uh, yeah. yeah. If you're not Someone growing, else is going to overpass you. Yeah. If you're not growing, you're dying. Basically, you have to become the best. You have to keep at the top in your field. That's great, I will translate it. Donc effectivement, pour lui, il y a énormément de similitudes avec le sport de haut niveau. Donc effectivement, Scott, il regarde ça avec des, des chiffres, des statistiques. Il dit, voilà, moi j'ai des, des résultats, des objectifs. Et c'est comme ça qu'effectivement, je, je sais si je suis sur la bonne voie ou pas, si je m'améliore ou pas, si, si je suis effectivement bon. Et j'essaie toujours de m'améliorer, de voir un peu ce qui se passe, etc. Et il fait beaucoup de comparaisons avec le basket. Il a parlé de LeBron James. Il a dit, voilà, le gars, il s'entraîne 8 heures par jour. Il essaie, il essaie toujours d'être le meilleur, le numéro 1 dans son domaine. Et c'est ce que je fais également dans mon business. Third question, thirteenth question, it's the last. And then, if you want to answer a few questions, that would be great. If not, thanks a lot. So, third question, yeah. You said that business is a team work and that you needed to, you know, to be with the best. At ClickFunnels, when you received the uh, 2,x uh, reward, you went with your, your team. You were like five, six persons on the, the stage. And, and you said, yeah, it's not me, it's my team. So for you, for the business, you need to have a great team. Yes? 100%. Uh, yeah. 100%. And If you want to go far. Yeah. And how, how did you, you know, select the guys in your team? Basically, you know, did you have some criteria? Because this is tough to find the good guys. Because somebody, sometimes you want to hire guys, but they want to, to take your business or they're not in the same side as you, or they want, you know, they're not really, they don't have your work ethic. So it's very hard, especially in marketing or, you know, to find the good persons, to keep them motivated, to keep them with you. So how do you do it? If you want, if you want, how do you do it? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, yet again, in the position that I'm in, uh, I've been able to invest time. And I think, um, I think real people recognize real. And so um, I think like at some point you have, to, you have to be willing to nurture that talent. And I've been very fortunate enough to be able to do that time and time again. But real recognizes real. You start working with someone, you're going to pick up on do yes. they have the three to four things that you're looking for? Work ethic. Are they able yeah. to go and try and problem solve themselves? Are they willing to put in the, the effort that's needed? Do they have a desire to grow and not die? Um, and do they do the right thing? That's what it comes down to. I totally agree with you. And this is, I have a great team. I have someone in my team who will leave, even if she's great, 
But yeah, she, she, she wants to go back to her country. But yeah, this is it. I think that you said it. You need to find the good persons. The, 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 you, you, can, you can identify them very quickly. You can also know if they have the, the right ethic and the right work ethic. Uh, this is huge. Thank you very much, Scott. And if you don't mind, maybe I will ask the audience to ask questions. So uh, just uh, Gérard said, on a vraiment l'impression qu'il y a une spiritualité derrière, c'est ce qu'il rendit. So Gérard, you know, Gérard is 70 years old. And he, he, he wrote under the YouTube channel, he said, Tommy, I'm 70 years old, but I watch your videos and you give me a great motivation and that's great. And so Gérard said, you have you know, like spirituality and we can see that, you know, it's very important in you. So spirituality is really important for you, as you said, it's something, it's a part of you. 100%, 100%. It's what's gotten me through the, the tougher times, to be honest with you. It's also given me that purpose. Yeah. And so, um, yet again, like, if you're not, if, I think you just have to ask yourself, like, why are you, what's the real purpose here? If it's yeah. that you just live 80 years, 90 years, and then that's, it's done, then, um, then cool. That's just, that's not what I believe. And so, mm. um, I invest the time in that. And for me, and yet again, this is just my journey, the more that I get in tune with that, the more, uh, I don't want to say reward, but the more uh, prosperity comes into my life. Ok, I'll translate very quickly. Donc, effectivement, il a dit que la spiritualité était super importante pour lui. Ça lui permettait effectivement de rester, voilà, de garder les pieds sur terre, d'être bien dans sa peau. De, bah, ça lui a permis également. Il, il s'est dit, voilà, on est, on est, on est de passage. Et euh, le, le but, c'est pas de se dire, voilà, je vais rester 80, 90 ans et après, voilà. Donc, pour lui, c'est vraiment, vraiment, vraiment quelque chose de super important. Ok, uh, Hamza said, uh, the best advice you can give to someone who wants to start an online business, e-commerce, for example. We talked about it uh, before, but do you have something else to say? So, so you said, yeah, 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 you have to be like, good, you have to have a real expertise, yes? yes. Yeah, and you got to ask yourself, why do you want to be good at that and, mm. and uh, tap into that, right? And so th this game is not easy. Like there's, a, there's yeah. simplicity in some of it, but yeah. there's going to be nights where you get freaking frustrated yeah. and you have to really tap into that. Like, why did I get started in the e-com game yes. in the first yes. place? A um, couple of people that I would say follow, I've got a, a really good relationship with Cody Nier at the Brand Academy. Um, mm -hmm. I would check him out. He's got a great course that you can get started in. If you're not willing to invest in yourself, then that probably tells you your level of success that you're going to. And so if you're going to go, go all in, jump in, embody yourself with as much content as you can. Um, check out the Brand Academy, like I said, and, uh, and go from there. Okay, great. The Brand Academy, so basically they are focused on e-commerce. Absolutely. Okay, great. Uh, super. Est-ce que je pense que la traduction, c'est rapide, c'est que... Il faut être bon, d'accord Il faut s'entourer des meilleurs. Il faut vraiment se dire que le business, c'est quelque chose où il n'y a pas de certitude. C'est comme un sport de haut niveau. J'en avais parlé récemment dans une vidéo où je disais la chose suivante. Il y a beaucoup de gens qui me disent c'est facile. Non, c'est pas facile. Gagner dans le domaine du business, gagner dans le domaine du trading, gagner dans le domaine du sport, c'est pas facile. Les gars qu'on voit au top du game, on se dit ouais, c'est facile. Ou alors ils ont fait si. Non, non, les gars, ils bossent comme des malades. Et je pense qu'avec Scott, vous avez pu le constater, le gars, il bosse comme un malade. Il bosse comme un malade. Ok, super. Do you have other questions? Karim said, do you have an advice to be financially free? <laughs> do you have an advice to be financially free? Yeah, What sign up for advice? my Tammy's courses. Uh, sign up for one of Tammy's courses. Yes, yes. follow okay. my courses. Great. Absolutely. Great. Thank you, Scott. Do, uh, other questions? And then we will, uh, and, and again, thanks a lot, Scott. It was great. Absolutely. I think uh, we had a few problems, but it's fine. Uh, then we will put it on YouTube and uh, it will have a great, great, great success. Other questions? Vous avez d'autres questions à poser? Ou pas? Bon, ben, les amis, what the moment you did say him he got to beat in this business? Alicia Keys, I don't understand your question. What the moment you did say him? He got the good bit in his business. I, I don't understand. Tu peux la poser en français, Alicia? Uh, uh, ask it in French and then I will... Uh, okay. Some, he said, Je comprends mieux. I, I can understand why you are in relation with Scott. Tell me you're an example for me. And Scott, what is your question? Okay, I cannot see. And Scott, what is the, the question? Okay. 
Quelles difficultés il a rencontré Ok, what were your struggles at the beginning <laughs> Yeah, uh, exactly that, of like finding my real sweet spot. And so I kept like trying several different things, several different things. And, um, and I was doing what I thought like people would, um, what I saw other people having success with. And so like I would try that instead of really figuring out like my self-awareness of this is what I'm good at. I'm going to stick to this and I'm going to double down and I'm going to learn this. Um, and then just having a team to be able to uh, like there's, there's times, like I said, in this game that you're going to struggle. And so one of the things that I have is um, I've got like a group of people now that I can call. And typically what I try and do is I try and problem solve it myself. And so I take 30 minutes where I turn the phone off. I turn the TV off. I turn off like Facebook notifications. And I say I'm going to commit to 30 minutes to solve this problem. And if I can't figure it out in 30 minutes, then maybe I'll call one of my mentors and see if he can solve it. But he knows that if I'm calling him, it's because I've busted my ass to try and figure it out. Right. And so I don't burn that bridge. Um, and so I would implement that if you can. I love it. I will translate it very quickly. Donc il a dit effectivement, il a eu, il a eu des problèmes, il a eu des... Mais en fait, quand il a un problème, qu'est-ce qu'il fait Il a dit, moi, j'essaie de, de, tout d'abord de gérer mon problème, d'accord Donc j'essaie de trouver des solutions. Et qu'est-ce que je fais je, je, suis, je me déconnecte du monde entier. J'éteins les notifications Facebook, la télé, compagnie, etc. Et je suis focus. Il a dit j'ai des mentors. Mais ces mentors, je les appelle que quand je me suis vraiment bougé le cul pour essayer de régler mon problème. Et si jamais je n'arrive pas à régler ce problème, j'appelle mes mentors. Et eux, ils vont m'aider à trouver des solutions. And this is great because this is what I do with my students. You know, some of my students, they want easy, easy solution. And I say, hey, look at the course. Have you taken the efforts? Did you make the work? And they said, no, but I did not. I said, look, watch the course and then come back to me. And then of course, when they come back to me, they say, yeah, the, 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 the solution was in the course. So basically they are sometimes lazy, it's normal, but it's great. Okay, another question, yeah. What were your mentors or what are for you, uh, yeah, uh, uh, what are your mentors today? Who are your mentors and what are, Who are uh, like the guys that inspire you the most? I don't know if I <laughs> made myself uh, clear. Yeah. So, so my two biggest mentors are really, uh, they're like the Wizard of Oz. They, they really stay behind the curtain um, and they mm. really let me be the face. Now, they are well connected within the uh, industry. They've had my success times 100 before they even met me. And so... Um, I'm very lucky that they saw something in me and decided to not only become my mentors, but my business partners. And that's worked out really well. Uh, from an inspiration point of view, Russell Brunson is a big inspiration for me. Uh, just the, the way that he carries himself yeah. to the, uh, the formula that he has like, perfected is genius in a lot of ways. Yeah, and genius. the way that he really decides good, to yeah. serve. Um, yeah. And that's what I want to do. I want to be able to serve people. That's great. Il a dit que Russell Brunson, c'était l'un de ses mentors, que parmi ses mentors, il y avait des gens qui étaient effectivement comme des... Ils préféraient rester discrets. Ce pas des gens, effectivement, mais c'est des gens qui, qui ont un énorme succès et qui sont super bons. Uh, Mehdi, for the daily habits, we talked about it later. Uh, OK. Do you like Tony, Tony Robbins? Robbins. <laughs> do you like Tony I Robbins? I do. I do. I've had the yes. chance to meet Tony a couple of times and... Um... His body of work speaks for, for itself. Um, yeah. I also believe in like that kind of coaching. Uh, I have a connection with Ben Newman that is a very like a uh, uh, same kind of same kind of guy, but works with athletes and in, in, um, mm. like college football programs and NFL. Mm. Um, and so I'm all about that lifestyle. To be honest with you, like. Absolutely. Great, great. Because some people, alors il a dit qu'il qu aimait beaucoup Tony Robbins, qu'il avait déjà rencontré deux fois et que c'était effectivement quelqu'un avec lequel il connectait. There are many people, especially in, you know, in Europe, that basically Tony Robbins, there is one guy who said to me, when Tony Robbins goes to Europe, you know, people that are not like that cold, he goes to London, people, but in the US, it's crazy. And I think that many people in Europe, they are like, you know, they don't believe too much in self-development and stuff like that. It's not like in the US, the mentality is different. For you, that is originally from Scotland, so you're... By, by the way, I've been to Edinburgh. I love nice. this city, wow. Nice. You are not far, you're not, not too far, but I love this yeah, city. Yeah, but I want to have North of Edinburgh. Uh, we still have like Christmas shopping and on the weekends and to watch the rugby, Scotland uh, rugby team. Uh, okay. plays out of, of Edinburgh, so a beautiful, beautiful city. Yeah, beautiful, one of the, the, the most beautiful in the world. So, uh, yeah, so basically there is this, this shift, but the mentality is, is, is totally different. Uh, 
uh, one one is asking, hi Scott, I don't have enough money to pay for my photographer school, so I'm working to pay it. Okay, great. What is your question? Luke, uh, how do you manage for you, your sleep time? How, how, how many hours do you sleep uh, in order to be productive? Good question. Yeah. So that changes, like I'm very in tune with my body. It used to be, um, cause yet again, there's a difference between grinding and hustle. Yeah. Back when I was like grinding and really like, uh, really into like pure growth for me, like four hours was what I needed. Um, yeah. Yeah. For, for some reason, like if I slept more than four hours, I was, was unproductive. Yeah. yeah. Now I don't know, maybe it's, I'm uh, I don't, I don't say I'm lazy or anything, but now, I really enjoy going to bed with my wife. Um, yeah. and, and so like now I'm, I'm sleeping like six and a half hours. Um, it's, it's really productive for me. me too. Good to go. <laughs> the same. That's great. Look, I, the same. Exactly. So uh, I will translate. I will now. It's crazy. Donc ce qu'il a dit, c'est trop marrant. Il a dit en fait, quand j'étais vraiment dans la phase, je bosse comme un con, comme un fou. Je dormais quatre heures par jour. Pour moi, c'était euh, voilà, c'était le max. Je pouvais pas dormir quatre heures par plus que quatre heures par jour. Il a dit aujourd'hui, voilà, je suis un peu plus tranquille, un peu plus cool. Je dors avec ma femme et je dors six heures et demie par jour. And before you were not sleeping with your wife or, or what? No, uh, yeah, I mean, that would, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, look, me too. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Happy life, happy life. Is yes, I agree with you. No, it's crazy. No, because it's really the same. The, the the same. Because before I was like sleeping four hours. Now I sleep six hours, and for me six hours is a lot. <laughs> But it's yeah. crazy. Okay, une autre question. Merci Tami, super. Pour ceux qui comme, attends. Okay, what is the daily routine? Do you have other questions? Because there are so, so many, so many. Wow, it's nice. Uh, one, one said, Martin said, can you help people without waiting something in return? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like it, there's so many ways of payment. Like it's not mm. about like dollar for dollar. Sometimes it's about like just yet again, for me, it's legacy. And so um, if I can impact someone, and that's really why I created the two comma mindset membership yeah. area that there's a lot of stuff in there that is absolutely free mm -hmm. um, that you can use to get started is because yes. like I want to be able to, to impact people. And that's why I'm doing like stuff like this podcast. Like hopefully there's, if there's yeah. just one nugget that you take from this, then, then hopefully you can go and implement that right away. Of course, I'm sure it will have an impact on many, many, many people. So thanks a lot. This is what I do my, myself. Basically, we have a YouTube channel. We have a nice audience. We have like 350,000 views a month, which is great. And basically, yeah. it's for free. Of course, it's good for my business, but I can, and you know it, I can, like, what, what you said when Scott contacted me at first, he said, tell me, We can see you're not doing it for money. You're doing it to help people. You really like what you do. You have a passion to... This is what you said, right? Yeah. He said, tell me, we can see you. You're not doing it for money. And I can tell you, of course, I'm making money, but I'm not doing it for money. This is not my purpose. This is not my first aim. Making money is normal. It's like the score. It's like if I want to help people, I need to make money because if you, you are the top of the, your game, you can help more and more people like Tony Robbins. Basically he has, uh, you know, uh, uh, rooms or, uh, you know, uh, conference rooms with like uh, 10,000 people, 5,000 people. Yeah, it's huge. It's crazy. But he's making money, but he's using it to do things and to, to help charities. Yeah, because you can do many, so many things with money. It's so important. Yeah. Great. Um, maybe last question. Books to read. Books to read for you. What are your best book you, you would advise uh, the audience to read? Uh, you know, I keep a couple with me. Um, Aha. I, this, uh, this book. Yeah. yeah. Really RussellBranson.com so, Secrets. Yeah, it's very good. I definitely advise on that if you want to get into the uh, yeah. online marketing game. Uh, the other one that I read recently, there's two that I read. This is the top three that I like. This is my top three. Um, mm. This is really good because this worked for me of like just managing uh, myself. Okay. And so I use this a lot. Uh, and then the other two that I, I definitely recommend is if you want uh, leadership, and that's where I wanted to go. John Maxwell's 360 yeah, yeah. Leader. Read this this past year. It's incredible. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, and then the last one, just because I get again, this is me working on my craft, is the conversion code because um, it's such a good book. But those four should give you plenty enough to get started. Excellent, excellent, excellent. I think what is the best investment now? Okay, look, Scott, it was really a great pleasure for me to have you in this uh, video, in this Facebook Live, in YouTube, everywhere. Uh, I think you, you're a great guy. You're really an inspiration. I love the way you work, your work ethic, uh, the way you see things. And really, really, really from the bottom of my heart, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for this interview. And I, I think and I'm sure it will have a positive impact on so many people. So thanks a lot. For your time. Hey, likewise, my friend. Let me just say, like, one, it's been a pleasure. Two, if you're watching this and, um, and you're part of a family's community, just know, like, how lucky uh, and blessed you are that you're already on the right path just by being here right now. And so keep putting that effort and just know what you sacrifice and the effort you put in today will determine your blessings tomorrow. And so, uh, Tammy, I'm looking forward to, to what uh, the future holds for you and, and, and your community. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And have a great day and hope see you, to see you again very soon. Maybe, maybe we will be able to, yeah, to meet very soon. Thanks a lot, Scott. Uh, it was a great, great, great pleasure. Bye. Thank you. Bon, les amis, merci beaucoup. Alors, est-ce que vous avez des questions En tout cas, j'espère que vous avez aimé. C'était une grosse interview. Scott, il a vraiment joué à 1000%. Il a apporté beaucoup, beaucoup, beaucoup de valeur dans cette interview. Vous avez vu, c'est un gars qui est vraiment hyper humble, qui réalise des chiffres de fou. Et ce qui est magnifique, c'est son état d'esprit, son mindset. J'espère que ça vous a inspiré, que vous avez vu que finalement, il y a des gens... Alors, c'est vrai que quand on pense à argent, on pense généralement à des gars qui flambe, Lamborghini, Ferrari et compagnie, mais que ce n'était pas ça l'objectif, d'accord Et que l'objectif, c'est d'abord l'indépendance. Premièrement, l'indépendance. Deuxièmement, vivre une belle vie. Troisièmement, avoir un impact, un, un impact sur la société, sur les gens, sur pas mal de choses. Et c'est ce qui va vous permettre justement de faire des, des choses énormes et de vivre une belle vie. Merci infiniment les amis. Voilà, j'espère que vous avez aimé. Le gars, il est magnifique. Euh, et je suis très très content de l'avoir invité et très content qu'il ait pu parler avec vous. J'espère que vous avez aimé. Alors pour ceux qui ne comprenaient pas l'anglais, j'ai essayé de traduire. C'est vrai que c'était rapide, il fallait que je traduise rapidement, que je fasse des résumés. Mais ensuite, on aura la vidéo complète, on aura les sous-titres. Je pense que vous allez kiffer. En tout cas, merci infiniment. Je vous souhaite une excellente soirée les amis. Et je vous dis à bientôt. Ciao, ciao, ciao. Euh...